Welcome to the getaway. I'm Pastor Danny Akers, uh, pastor of Victory Rock Praise and Worship Center in Galleon, Ohio. And we welcome you to today to the getaway. The reason we call this is the getaway because there's a time when we all just need to get away, to get away with God and get away in the word of God and to see what God has for us. So we welcome you to join us here today on WFBN TV on the program, The Getaway. And also you can... Uh, uh, watch our previous programs if this is the first time that you've uh, viewed us on our YouTube channel Victory Rock the getaway and you can watch all of our episodes It's being loaded up new ones every week. So we welcome you to join us get in the word today So we just ask you can get comfortable get your Bible and we're going to get into the word today And our today's subject is called on the third day now this will interest you because this definitely applies to to the times in which we live now. We're going to go into the Word of God and see what God says about the times, the seasons, and when we are up on this earth watching the fulfillment of the Scriptures. We're going to go to Hosea chapter 6 and read the first three verses. Hosea 6, 1-3 says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for He hath torn, and He will heal us. He hath, he hath smitten, and He will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. This is a prophecy given by the prophet Hosea. He's telling us, come and let us return unto the Lord. So there's something that's going to happen in the latter days that's going to cause people to come and return to God. I believe it's the, uh, as the scripture said, the latter rain. It's the harvest that's coming after the latter rain. But he says here that after two days, he will revive us. Now, on previous episodes, I've talked about how that I believe, you know, the creation that God did in the earth was a prophetic layout blueprint, if you will, of uh, his timelines upon the earth. Now, some people believe, of course, that, you know, God did all the creation, everything within the seven days. And some people believe that uh, that it took 7,000 years. How, whichever way it was, we know that either way, it was prophetically of a timeline. So he laid everything out in a seven-year plan. And we're going to see that as God went through, you know, each thousand years, a generation had served its purpose and fulfilled the plans that God had until he reached, you know, the first 4,000 years, till he reached the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, no doubt, is where Hosea is starting his prophecy because he speaks that in the two days he will revive us. There's been a reviving of mankind in the last 2,000 years. Since Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, and he came upon the earth and he lived among us. It says that, you know, he died upon the cross for our sins and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And he gave a revised life called a new creation to all mankind. So in these two days, it's been exciting. In these two days, as we read the history of Pentecost and all the times uh, in the last 2,000 years, that have been fulfilled. There's been great revivals, great moves of God. There's been things happening upon the earth. But we see as we come to the close of the second day, the fulfillment, if you will, of the word of God, he speaks of a third day. And he says, in the third day, he will raise us up. No doubt this is going to be the catching away of the church and God's going to raise up 
all the people who lived in those 2,000 years. Uh, that's, I think this is why Hosea starts with uh, the, the last 3,000 uh, years is because prior to that, uh, the resurrection in Christ is for the church, which would be the last 2,000 years. So the third day he raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Paul said to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. So we see then to know God is preparing us for this third day. Now, what does he mean, the third day? Well, as we said, we believe the prophetic uh, utterance of the word of the Lord is laid out in a 7,000 year plan. We know it took 4,000 to get to Jesus, and we know from Jesus it's been right around 2,000. Now, I believe God allowed the calendars to be manipulated by man so nobody would know the exact day or the hour. But I do believe we're crossing over, even as I speak, into this third day. I believe that we're seeing the fulfillment of the first two that Hosea spoke of. He's taken us into that third day. And there's also, you know, we're watching so many things that's been fulfilled in the Word of God. We're watching that, you know, in this exciting times that we're living, we're watching mysteries that have been hidden in the word being revealed today. We're watching scriptures that are giving way to understanding, such as when, you know, uh, Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Look at the last 200 years, one-tenth of the time period that I'm talking about. There has been more knowledge that's been brought forth. In fact, they claim that knowledge increases now at an alarming rate, doubling about every six months. So we're watching the word of God being fulfilled, and we're just seeing now that things that promises in the Bible that have been been hidden away, rather, are now being unveiled to a generation such as us. This is exciting, church. This is exciting time to be alive. I believe the apostles longed to see our day, and they longed for this time they preached about it, they talked about it, they recorded in the scriptures about it, but there was also times when Jesus was alive. Because you see, all scripture is given for the inspiration, all scripture is given, you know, for us, and I believe all scripture is prophetic. You know, the, the spirit of Jesus is prophecy. And in John chapter 2, I believe Jesus was living out a prophetic thing to help us to understand what we're talking about today, this lesson on the third day. In John chapter 2, we'll read the first three verses. St. John 2, beginning of verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, They have no wine. I believe this is prophetically right down to the point where it says the third day there was a marriage. Because we know that when the fulfillment of the 2,000 years of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we enter into somewhere in the early morning of the third day, there's going to be a catching away of the church. There'll be a resurrection of the dead, of all who lived in Christ for the past 2,000 years. We know that we'll go to what's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is a time I believe that we'll happen in heaven at the time that the uh, that the tribulation period is going on on the earth because this marriage lasts seven uh, years so we know that in this uh, marriage that there's a seven-year tribulation period that's being released up on the earth now I I believe the church will be called away I believe the resurrection of the dead will be raised and I believe that we'll be there in that marriage supper and Jesus was demonstrating this prophetically in attending this marriage because it's important to notice both Jesus was called and his disciples. See, there's a calling up, a catching away that all the disciples of Christ and Christ himself, you know, was at this wedding. So we can see here at the wedding, there, there arose a problem at the wedding. And that the problem was, is they ran out of wine. You see, as the six water pots that Jesus filled, he says there were six of them. Because uh, why six? Because I believe that this was prophetically talking about those each thousand years. Because the scripture says a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. We saw this even in Adam. Because when Jesus, or the Lord rather, God told Adam 
the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. How long did Adam live? Just shy of a thousand years. So he died in the day of the Lord, not man's days. Okay. Some people argue, well, he didn't die for 900 and some years. That's right. Because no man was allowed to live past a thousand. Even in the mercy and grace of God, whenever he was going to send destruction of the flood upon the earth, he, you know, he had Methuselah, whose name meant judgment at death, to live to be the longest time period of any man on the earth, but he didn't live to be a thousand, did he? Because God would not violate his word, but his mercy took Methuselah to the longest permitted time he could allow. But at Methuselah's death, judgment came. Now, we're going to talk about these six water pots because I believe these water pots represent each thousand years upon this earth. On each thousand years, they were people who were fulfilling their purpose. On our previous episode, we talked about, you know, the vision of victory. We talked about how that God has given purpose. And, you know, it, it excites me to know that every thousand years, they were men of God that God give vision and they had purpose and they fulfilled that purpose. But at the end of those 6,000 years, when all the jars of clay had fulfilled their purposes and, it, and the wine ran out, now there was a new time. There was a new day that was coming. And this new day is that third day of Hosea or the seventh day of the creation of the earth. So a wedding's going to take place and I believe that this is when the new millennial starts. Now, instead of moving into the new millennial, I want to just talk about what it's going to look like upon this earth as we close out this second day, move into the third. Or better yet, if we close out the 6,000th year and move into the 7,000th. Well, in Ezekiel, he gives us somewhat uh, understanding in this scripture. In Ezekiel chapter 38, you've probably heard... Uh, much being said, because I believe in the last days now, as we're beginning to see wars becoming a reality, we're beginning to see uh, alignments of nations, there'll probably be a, a interest now of the prophetic again of the last days. I remember back because of my age and how long I've been saved, that people used to preach prophecy more. They would talk about the last days. They would talk about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But over the years, we've kind of let up a little bit on that line of teaching. And now we're just more or less getting back into seeing fulfillment of scripture. So just expect an interest in these last days. Be ready, uh, pastors and teachers and preachers, to, to be able to explain to people where we're living and why we are where we are. And Ezekiel 38 verse 4 says, And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thy armies, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So Ezekiel is telling us that he has been commanded by God to prophesy against a land that's north of Israel. This land is no doubt uh, none other than we see where Israel, uh, north of Israel, is uh, Russia. Now, in this time, it was called Gog and Magog, okay? But we can see that the word Magog actually means high mountain. So it's a northern place high up above Israel. Also, we know from the word of God that uh, these names of all these lands that are in north of Israel were the grandsons of Noah. Japheth's sons birthed nations who were named according to their names. But until latter times, when times changed and new seasons come, and through the generations of fulfilling the water pots, they were given new names. And now, but when we go back to the original maps north of Israel, we'll find out if you go directly straight of uh, north of Israel, you're going to go right through Ukraine. Isn't that interesting that today, as I make this video in March of 2022, that Ukraine is the number one thing that's in the news today. Of course, they're being invaded by, is, uh, by uh, Russia. And the invasion that's taking place is to reestablish uh, the armies that need to come against Israel. See, the North will be reunited. They'll be brought back together. 
I'm not saying anything negative or bad about the Ukrainian people. I know that there's a lot of churches. We had a man recently in our church who was involved uh, with many churches in Ukraine. He goes over there and speaks, and he said one of the churches in one of the cities is like a large, very large church of several thousand. But nonetheless, the word of the Lord will be fulfilled. I believe Ukraine will fall into the hands of Russia, not because I want them to, but because the scripture has to be fulfilled. So many times Jesus told the disciples, this we must do, that the scripture be fulfilled. So we're watching the fulfillment, and I don't think it will end with Ukraine. As we see that, you know, Ezekiel also prophesied that a military man would rise up and lead this charge. I believe the leader of Russia, that he is, meets the requirements of what was prophesied uh, by Ezekiel. I can see that he is a former KGB guy. He was also a high officer in that, and he's a militant guy. And he's going to uh, pull together the armies of the north so that we can see that the war is spoken about by Ezekiel. Now, the word of God tells us of three major wars that's going to take place in the latter days. We can see that the one that's about to happen now or the stage is being set is called the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. This is where the nations and alignment of nations will be gathered back together north of Israel. And then when the time clock says so, where God releases the purpose, they will come down and attack Israel. The second war it's mentioned is going to happen seven years after that one. And that's called uh, Armageddon. We know what happens in Armageddon because it's laid out for us in the word of God. Then the third and final battle will be the one that Satan himself leads a great army against the armies of God. But right now, where we're living, I believe, is coming into the third day, Hosea's third day. It's the morning of the third day. And we can see that in this morning, he's going to revive us. See, these things are happening that a great harvest will come forth. God's plans will not be stopped, and God's purposes will not be changed in the earth. Though man will do wars and rumors of wars and all these things that must come to pass, that's lined up in the scripture and spoken of and prophesied, they will come to pass. But we don't have to worry because God is using us for our purposes in these last days. So now we can see that as these descendants of Noah are, and the countries that were named by them are in the north, are being aligned back up, we can expect the rest of the fulfillment of this scripture uh, to be fulfilled. But I want to point out another scripture for you in Ezekiel 38, verse 11. It says, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest and dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. You know, I think it's amazing that not too many years ago that Ukraine was the third largest nuclear power in the earth. I don't know if you know this or not, but when the breaking up of the USSR happened, Ukraine ended up with, uh, with like 5,000 nuclear warheads. They had thermal nuclear warheads, and they were the thr third strongest nation in the world with, uh, for nuclear power. So what happened? They entered into a time of a peace agreement, didn't they? They, they agreed to give up the nuclear weapons for peace. And doesn't that say it in the, in the book of Thessalonians and the New Testament, that when they cry peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. We're only at this time of this video, like in day seven of the war. And it's not going to last too much longer because they've taken some of the major cities and now they're coming upon the capital city. Sudden destruction within a week has come up on Ukraine. My heart hurts for the people. I see the videos and the pictures where blood is being shed, children are suffering, and I wish we could stop this. But listen, God said in these days, his word would be fulfilled. The flower may fed, fadeth and the grass wither, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. So let's get in the word and see what God has says coming next. What's going to happen? Well, the wall, unwalled cities was people who laid down their uh, nuclear weapons for treaties. They laid down their nuclear weapons because, see, a nuclear ability would have caused to bend like a wall against the enemy. No one would attack a city. No one would attack a nation with nuclear power. 
but through agreements with men, through crying peace and safety, through a promise given to them by Russia that they would always protect them and have their back. Well, we see how that's turning out, don't we? This is why I never believe that we should lay down our arms. This is why I should never believe that we should have unwalled cities. This is why I believe that we need the barriers because, you know, even in life, there's barriers. You know, we drive down the road, we'll see there's guardrails that's put up alongside the road. Why are the guardrails there? Because there's danger. There's danger across those guardrails. And if your car goes off the road, you'll hit the guardrail and the guardrail will keep you safe. Well, this is what walled cities do. They're boundaries. They're borders. There are places that the enemy knows don't cross. There are places that we know from the inside. We're safe within those walls. So this is what it, we're trying to, we're seeing a movement today in the world where we're trying to tear down the borders. We're trying to tear down the walls. We're trying to take down, even in our Christian walk, we're watching people who are letting down the walls of their Christianity. I believe that God has given us protection. I believe God has given us wisdom in the word and to know the word of God and that we have an anointing and presence and power of God upon us to protect us. I believe this, that we walk in that. But what we're seeing though is prophecies being fulfilled. I don't know if you've heard about the prophecy that was given uh, many years ago about a little strait that runs down by Turkey uh, into one of the seas. Uh, uh, it was, it was uh, called, uh, I can't pronounce the word, but it was like Bophorus or something straight that runs down by Turkey. And there was a prophecy said that when you see the Russian ships pass through that strait, it's time to put on the seventh day clothes. What does that mean? That means the seventh day clothes, I believe, is a fulfillment that we're coming into the seventh day. But the seventh day clothes was also what they put on to go before the Lord. So what are we seeing today? fulfillment of scripture. What are we seeing today? Mysteries of the word being revealed. What are we seeing today? Is we're seeing scriptures that are yielding to the understanding that we can now understand that we're in the latter days. We're in the end of the 6,000 years. The six water jars of prophecy, of fulfillment. Every generation had their place of fulfillment in their jar. And now the jars have been empty. Now the wine is gone and we see that it'll take the washing of the water of the word. They're going to fill the time periods up now with the word of God. And the word of God is going to be clear to bring forth and show us what time that we're living in. This is an exciting time, church, to be alive. This is an exciting time to know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an exciting time to stand in faith and know that God is fulfilling his purposes in the land today and we're just watching things happen you know as this strait that goes down by turkey there were six russian ships in the month of february passed through why six why six because six is the number of man six is the fulfillment of man's time upon the earth when the seventh day comes i believe that man's authority that he was given dominion upon the earth will come to a fulfillment. I believe that when we cross that sixth day, that 6,000 years, which I believe we're crossing now, that man's dominion upon this earth will be fulfilled. God's promise to what man he gave man in the book of Genesis is being fulfilled. And we're watching man now. We're coming into a new day. This is the morning of the seventh day. This is the morning of Hosea's third day. So as we come into this day, lift up your eyes because your redemption draweth nigh. And we need to draw nigh unto God that he'll draw nigh unto us. What a great time it is for us to get into the word of God to identify where we're living. What a great time it is upon the earth to know that the word of the Lord is real. It's coming true. Everything that he said is being fulfilled and the time clock of God's history is beginning to now yield way and showing us that we are living in the last days. It's not a time to be fearful. It's not a time to be dreadful. It's not a time but to, 
you know, think, oh, why was I born in this time? It's a time to be excited. It's a time to rejoice and know that we can live in this time fulfilling the plans and purposes that God has for us. I believe in this time of last days, there'll be great miracles. I believe in the times of the last days, there'll be armies of God that'll be raised up. I believe in these last days, we're going to see that latter rain that just like we did the former rain. You know, in the former rain of Pentecost, Peter walked out and one day, 3,000 people were added unto the church. What if in the latter rain, because he said it, it will be greater. God said in the, when he turned the water into wine, he saved the best for last. What if in this last day harvest, the latter rain comes upon your church and there's 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 even added because it'll be greater. The latter rain will be greater than the former rain. It'll give way to the things of God and fulfillment. Get excited, church. Get in the word of God. Let God reveal to you the times in which we're living today. And I believe we can know these. Like the sons of Ishakar, we can know and discern the times. I want to thank you today. For joining uh, me, I'm Pastor Dan Akers with Victor Rock Praise and Worship Center in Galleon, Ohio, talking about on the third day, Hosea's third day. Exciting times are coming. We're, thank you for joining us on WFBN TV and I ask you to join us daily at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Go watch our previous episodes on the Victory Rock YouTube channel. God bless you. Thanks for joining. I see.